maybe get a cup of tea before you paint your teapot or just get started. Now, you can paint your teacup and teapot any color you would like. So if you don't want it to be blue, then just think about the techniques I'm using and imagine it with a different color. I'm starting with the spout of my teapot and I'm making it a very light blue. So I'm watering down my blue to create a light layer. And I'm also gonna try to leave some areas of highlights. That means I'm painting around one area and letting the white paper show through. This creates that glassy, glossy surface of a ceramic teapot and how the light would bounce off of it and create a highlight or shine. At the base of the spout, I'm creating a bit of a shadow by not watering down my paint as much using more straight paint. Now, across the body of the teapot, I'm gonna do the same type of thing where I plan out some highlights by painting around some rectangles. Those rectangles are somewhat angled or curved to copy the shape of the body of the teapot. Leaving those highlights there makes it look nice and glossy, like mentioned already. I'm gonna do the same thing at the base of the teapot. I'm trying to paint it in sections because as I paint, I might change my mind about what goes where, so I'm not assuming my whole teapot will be blue. Um, you might have seen already by the finished example that it will mostly be blue, but it's fun to kind of go along and go with the flow when you're painting to see what you have decide in the end. It's always nice when your teacup matches your teapot, but it's not required. On the inside of my teacup, I'll make that area blue as well, but I'll probably go back and add some shadow to make it look different than the outside of the cup. My handle's gonna have that same blue color, and we're just gonna do a lot of blue, and I'll meet you back here in a moment. Now that I've done plenty of blue, I'm gonna pick a color that I think will go nicely with blue. For me, that will be purple. One way to pick your fabulous next color is to think about the color wheel and think about the colors that are side by side on the color wheel. Those colors are called analogous colors. Side by side colors, neighbors on the color wheel. For example, blue, blue purple, purple, yellow, yellow orange, orange. Typically they include one primary, one tertiary and one secondary color. Again, these colors just look nice together. They're not opposites. So they're not purple and yellow. They're not red and green. Those colors are complementary or opposites. Now, you could pick a complementary color that would make your design pop or be easier to see. However, if you're painting with watercolor, which you are, and you've already painted, for example, blue on your teapot, and you decided you wanted to use orange, which is complementary to blue, if you painted blue on top of orange, it's possible that they will mix and create brown because complementary colors, when mixed, create brown. And as we know, watercolor is transparent, which is see-through, so that colors oftentimes mix when they are layered together. So if you really wanted to paint opposite colors, you just have to make sure to leave some empty space to put that complementary color. But as you see, what I'm doing is I'm picking analogous colors, and I recommend that to make your artwork feel connected. Now, because I'm choosing analogous colors, I can actually paint on top of my blue and I know it'll still look good. So I could add some lines or shapes or marks or designs to make my teapot stand out or look more handmade or passed down to the generations or just fun. Do whatever things are interesting to you. I tried not to draw it too detailed so that you would have room to add your own designs. You could even get out a pen and draw designs before you paint if you haven't started painting yet, or you wait for it to dry and then draw some designs and then paint some more. Let your creative just run free with this one. Have fun adding designs and details, keeping in mind the shininess of it. So try to avoid covering up those white shiny spots that you left open. You'll see as I add a design a little bit later, I have to kind of paint around one, which can be tricky, but it's very valuable to make your pot look 3D or shiny or realistic. So let's keep having fun and just make some cool designs. The 
final steps might be to add a little bit of a shadow on a table or a surface. I'm using some of that purple, which was my kind of accent color. I'm laying my brush on its side to try to use that dry brush effect, which means there's not a ton of paint on my brush because I want it to look a little scratchy or textured on the edges. It just creates a fun, interesting contrast to the shininess of the teapot itself. You could also just make a blob of color um, below it where it's sitting on the table as well. Finally, I decided I want some tea in my teacup, so I'm getting a little bit of brown and just putting it right inside that top oval of the teacup to make it look like I've actually poured out some tea to sip while I do my paintings. I hope you're feeling more confident in making those shiny reflections and that you had fun designing this teapot and teacup to be your own. See you in the next one. <laughs>